Welcome, Graham. Um, as we ask everyone to start off with, how did you actually get into baseball? Well, Brett, it was uh, when I was 10 years old. I, uh, uh, my sister had a boyfriend that played at down in Geelong. His name was Craig Spry. And he said, why don't you come down and have a game? And uh, so I thought I'd come down and check it out. And they didn't have an under-13 team. And so I played in the under-15 team the first time. And, and I got up there and I, I went up and had a hit and didn't know what I was doing and whatever. And, and like ran to first and Graham first told me, you're out. You know, it was a fly ball. And I, and it's one of those first things like, oh, okay, this game's a little different. I hit the ball, I thought I'd be on first. So they put an ad in the paper the next week that uh, they needed an under-13 team, and, and uh, nine people turned up down on the common in, in Geelong, and, and I put my hand up to pitch, and uh, so that's how it all started. I see. And it was only winter league back then? Uh, the Geelong didn't have a summer league? Yeah, it was... Uh, a winter league that we were playing in Geelong, and uh, we uh, played against a number of teams. I think uh, one of the teams might have been one of your old teams, Guild, but uh, but we had like, a number of teams we played in the, in the junior league there on the 13s, and uh, I played down there for a number of years. Okay, and then when did you go to uh, play the summer season? When, what age were you when you started doing that? I was uh, like uh, 15, 16, I think okay. it was. I, was, I went up to... Uh, Play in Essendon, and uh, you know had uh, some really good uh, times playing up there, and with some really cool people. Um, so I, I, uh, I went up to, with Greg O'Donoghue, another uh, Geelong native, and and uh, Mum and Dad used to drive me up to Melbourne on the weekends to, to go play baseball. And that you had no choice because there was no team in Geelong back then for summer, was it? No, in summer there wasn't at that time. No. Yeah. Now, also many people probably don't know, but you had a severe back injury when you were a youngster. Can you explain what happened? Oh yeah, I, um, I'd made the Victorian team and it was just a couple of weeks out and uh, uh, yeah, I jumped into a pool and I fractured my spine and I had a hairline fracture of my spine and I missed the tournament and I was on my back for four weeks straight, but I was very lucky that uh, there was no permanent damage and uh, I missed sport for a whole year actually. Yeah, and you mentioned you were in the state team as a as a junior, and you went through all the junior Victorian teams, made some Australian teams. Uh, then you went on and played in the senior Victorian team, Claxton Shield. Yes, I, I did back in uh, nineteen eighty seven, if I'm correct, eighty and uh, and uh, it was one of the wonderful Claxton Shields where you were playing in two games in each state, and uh, uh, at that time there was a scout that was travelling around. You know, at that time, I think, uh, well, maybe that's a bit early, actually. Yeah, well, you spoke about a scout, and yeah, probably a couple of years after, um, around that time, you were scouted by the Toronto Blue Jays. And how did that all pan out? Because that wasn't happening in Australia back then. No, it was, um, I think uh, John Galloway had a bit to do with it right there, and uh, he said, to come and have a look at this kid. And, and uh, I was travelling around um, uh, Australia with Claxton Shield, and... Uh, I was playing first as well, I got injured, so the guy travelled all around Australia until um, he came back to Melbourne, I, I think I pitched against Western Australia uh, in the Claxton Shield and gave up about eight runs, but I obviously must have shown some potential and uh, he offered me a nominal fee to go and play over in America and uh, I said, no way. So he added a thousand. I said, "Okay." <laughs> but uh, he, uh, yeah. So that's how it sort of started me going to America. And how old were you when this was transpired? I was uh, twenty. Just uh, you know, just finished electrical apprenticeship in Geelong with Gordon McKay, who was a big baseball man over there. So uh, you know, I was lucky enough to be with an organisation that said signed off early on my apprenticeship and said, you know, go go follow your dream. That's fantastic. And. Being a little bit older, I remember at the time you said it, it, it helped you because you didn't have many people who'd gone from signing out of Australia to actually go into the minor leagues. There might have only been two guys in the minor leagues at that stage, yeah. uh, Craig Shipley and David Nilsson, or was David after you? David was after you. David, David was over there at the oh, time, okay. I believe. Oh, well, maybe a year, year or so yeah. after. But so you didn't have a lot of people to... There wasn't too many other Aussies over there at the time, but yeah, it was... It was good for me to have four years out in the world, you know, as an electrician, uh, before going over to America. I'd been, I'd gone over with junior Australian teams uh, to Canada actually for, for one, and uh, 
and the U.S. for another. But uh, it was it was a very big eye opener to to come over here and uh, you know have in well spring training it was you know nearly 30 games. So you know I I played two seasons what I was used to over in Australia in spring training. Then I had 142 games for the season. Mm -hmm. and, so my arm was tired even before the season started, <laughs> and I thought, "How am I going to get through this?" And yeah. uh, it was, yeah, it was a big change, big experience, and big, uh, big change on what I was used to. And and you you, you worked your way through the Blue Jays minor system, minor league system. And what level did you reach? I got to Double A uh, in 1992 in Knoxville, Tennessee, and I was a closer part of the time there, um, half the time there, and then. They were thinking about bringing me up in September, so I got my only start in minor league baseball um, in uh, August, coming up to September because they have September call-ups. In, uh, in that would have been lovely to been called up that year because uh, the Blue Jays went on to win the World Series. But my starts didn't go so well, you might say, and uh, I was kept down in in Double A and just finished the season out. But you must have impressed because at the end of the 1992 season, in what we call the Rule Five Draft. You were selected by the Milwaukee Brewers. So, can you explain what the Rule Five Draft is and and how that all comes to? Yeah, mind? the Rule Five Draft is a beautiful thing. Many players <laughs> think it. it's it's when you you might get stuck in an organisation and and they protect you after you have five years uh, with an organisation, the six year, they protect you either Double AA, A, Triple A, or the big leagues. And what Toronto did was tr uh, protect me Triple A, uh, that which which means another big league organization can pick my contract up for $50,000 and put me into the big league uh, 40 man. So if, if I didn't uh, make the team, then they'd sell me back for half price for 25000 and then you go back to your original team. Um, but fortunate enough for me, I was uh, Rule 5 to Milwaukee and uh, I think I, I pitched 20 innings in, in spring training and uh, they had a pretty good look at me and decided to keep me and that was my first year in the big leagues was 1993. Yeah, and the other thing with uh, Milwaukee, David Nilsson was there at that time, so you would have had someone at spring training to talk to. And... Yeah, I think David might have had a little whisper in some of the, the <laughs> organizations here, right? the men up there in the administration to say, use the, the Rule 5 drive for me. So. So I uh, thank you for that, but uh, yeah, he was. It, we became the first Australian battery that year, and uh, uh, two Aussies in the same team. I don't know if it's happened. I think it's happened one time uh, after that, uh, but uh, it's. Um, it was really great to have him there, and uh, you know, be a part of the team with him. Yeah, and I still, the younger ones mightn't remember, but the poster that it's just an iconic poster in Australian baseball. The Australian rules. Baseball. Baseball. Yeah. And it's got yourself and Nelly uh, in the Brewers uniform. That, that's just... Yeah, that was that was really cool. You know, yeah. it was <laughs> one morning at about 8 o'clock and we went out to Brewers County Stadium, which if anyone's ever been to Milwaukee in, in April, it's quite cold. Uh, I think my f one of my, my one of the years they, they scraped off six inches of snow on opening day. So but we, we were right out there on the mound early in the morning. It was freezing and... Uh, they're spraying uh, liquid all over our face to make it look like we're, we're sweating and uh, and all that stuff. But it was it was a really cool thing to do, and I think that Nike shipped out thousands of um, of them just to, to pass around Australia for each state, and uh, it was it's a it's a really cool one. Yeah. Now you were the first ever Australian to pitch in the big leagues, and I think your first pitch might have been to Nelly. Um, no, it wasn't. wasn't? Okay. No, That's no, bad no. research on my behalf. No, it's, it's all right. But I, I think Nilly was injured at the time. Yeah. And uh, he, uh, um, it was, a, it was a few weeks in before we pitched to each other. Okay. But don't look up the stats on that day. I don't think it was the greatest. Uh, <laughs> but the, the big thing was that we, uh, you know, got to pitch to each other. I got to pitch to him, and uh, it was, it was really cool to have another Aussie there. Yeah. And I know. You don't want me to mention this part, so if you don't answer, it's okay. But after you come back from your first season, and we've already discussed how your parents would drive you to Melbourne for many, many years, and it was a long drive back in those days. <laughs> Can you let us know, or are you happy to let us know what you did when you got back into the country after your first year in the yeah, big leagues? Didn't have the ring road. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, well, no. I mean, you know, I, I just kind of thank them for by uh, getting them a car that you know that I so I sort of repaid some of the miles on what they did for me, of course, not repaid much at all compared to what they did for me, but uh, 
you know, that was like the first thing on the list. No, and, and look, that, that was fantastic to do. And uh, the big tough farmer, Noel, I heard he had a tear when you gave him the car. He claims <laughs> hay fever. Never. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he, that was, uh, you know, I remember them talking about wanting to go to Kakadu, so it was a big four-wheel drive that they got. But, uh, yeah. I think they, yeah, so... It was, uh, that's an awesome was, thing to do. Now, after about three and a half years pitching in the big leagues, um, you were traded to probably the, the biggest franchises in the world. Yeah, I went from Milwaukee, who had uh, two beat riders and, and, a, and a couple of um, you know cameras at you, to uh, 50 cameras in your face and, and, and the same amount of beat riders. So I went to New York from uh, Milwaukee, and uh, it was it was a big change. I was having probably one of my best years, and that's why they were deciding between I think two or three lefties. I think Mike Myers was another one, and I can't remember what the other lefty was, but uh, they decided. Um, to take me and uh, Pat Listash uh, for Gerald Williams and Bob Whip Bob Bob Wickman in a trade in a trade. So they had traded uh, from at that time. Uh, Milwaukee were on the bottom ladder, and the Yankees were in a playoff fight with Boston. So you know it just became uh, seriously intense very very quickly. Yeah. Now it wasn't all plain sailing when you first got there because you were actually carrying an arm injury and you didn't. Bother to tell many people that stuff. Well, stage. yeah, I'm kind of told, you know, don't, don't mention this sort of thing. But, uh, <laughs> no, but uh, I, I, uh, I did have an arm injury, and Pat Listas had a broken foot, so, so he was actually uh, traded back and they gave someone else, but that wasn't his fault. Uh, that, and also, you know, they did have x rays and, and, uh, at that time for him, and no broken bones showed up, but sometimes, you know, a few weeks, a week later, they did it again. Fractured, fractured foot, so he was sent back and they got some more people out there, but myself, I'd had a um, uh, cortisone shot in my arm, and uh, they failed to mention that one too, so uh, New York, you might have said, were, were quite upset, and uh, I got the very first person I faced out, you know, I, I was traded uh, in the morning, I was in Cleveland, and uh, I remember it was just after a day off, and I'd just gone through the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and uh, I was looking up at the things up there and there was some Pink Floyd stuff and it said the path less travelled and all this stuff. And then the next day um, I had another path. I was, I was going to Yankee Stadium and uh, that night I pitched and uh, I pitched to Jason Giambi and I, I got him out and got my job done and they were, they were all in front of my locker, all happy and everything and, and uh, you know we won the game and that was like the only guy I got out for the next three weeks. <laughs> So, yeah, so it all turned in New York over those three weeks. Uh, yes, they were not very happy with me. Um, they, uh, they put me on the back page of the, the, the uh, New York Post as the, the blunder from down under. <laughs> then I screwed up that night and I got a five hopper up the middle off Mo Vaughan. It was a base hit and uh, then I was a Graham Reaper. So, you know, two days there and... It was funny because I remember Milwaukee were coming into town that day, the second day that that heading was up there, and Turner Ward, one of my teammates, he just came up and hugged me. <laughs> How you doing, Graham? You all right? You know, he said, I just couldn't believe if my name was there. What would it be like? But yeah, it was it was struggle. It was it was tough, you know, and uh, to go through the injury and then, you know, I, I knew my mechanics were out of whack a bit too and stuff like that. So, you know, I was just trying to get back to to being healthy and. Uh, you know, I had little kids on bikes rolling my thing, telling me how much I sucked, and you know, it was just, you know, it was relentless in New York. It was like they they had a target on my back, and they were they were going to get me. But uh, luckily enough, things turned around, and uh, I started to pitch a little bit better before the the playoffs came around. And uh, I think uh, in the end, uh, before they picked the the postseason roster. I think Don Zimmer had a, a whisper in Tory's ear, and I think even Bob Uecker, uh who was the announcer in Milwaukee uh, that I, I was with for three and a half years, even said, you know, you know, give him a go. So, you know, Joe uh, put the faith in me and uh, put me on the postseason roster, and uh, so it was, it was, it was a big, big thing. So I, I got to got to play in the, the postseason in, in the World Series. And just going back to the press, and that I know you. You struggle with it, and you've people don't realize you've come from a, a small country town just outside of Geelong, on a farm. What we had one newspaper, one radio station, no TV. All of a sudden, you're in the middle of New York with more people than you've probably ever seen 
in your life and no one to talk to about it and you are being ridiculed. Yeah. To come back from that has to show how mentally tough you were. Yeah, well, I hope to think that. You know, it's, it's one of those things. It's, it's a very tough situation. It's relentless. Because Yankees have so many fans, it didn't matter if I, I went to Toronto, they'd be screaming, Lloyd, you suck. And, you know, you know, people telling me to kill myself in L.A. I still remember, you know, looking up there and people saying, worst trade ever, you, you know, you're the worst, what are you, why don't you just leave, you know, all these things. And it was, it was every day. And uh, so, you know, it was hard to stay positive, but, you know, my main goal and, you know, even like in the paper, they said Lloyd's just trying to get down to you know psychology 101, where it's like you know I, you know tomorrow's another day that sort of thing, and it, it sort of was. It was like you know I just wanted to get my arm better and healthy and be able to to pitch and and do what I could do. And, you know I, I threw on a, up on the back net in in California. It's like geez, does it get any worse? You know, you know I, I threw like five innings and you know I had like a 17, 18 ERA, mm. but. Uh, you know, when it comes down to it, when you get to the field, it's, you know, like, even being on a new team, you know, so not knowing teammates and all that sort of stuff, you know, but it, it was it was a tough time. It was a very tough time. It was like, uh, even though I did come out the roses on the other end, it was like, you know, what do I, what do I want to really do after this, you know, and do I really want to play baseball? It, it got to that point in my head. Yeah. But, uh, you know, that's, that's the way it was. Well, you've picked in the playoff roster. And game one, you're brought out from the pen in your home stadium and the reception. Yeah, well, I told, I was lucky enough to have my parents come out and, you know, they were at the, the World Series. So it was a great thing. You know, I had my parents there. I had my, um, uh, you know, family was there. Everyone was coming to the games to watch. And uh, even before the game started, I, I, uh, they do the roll call when everyone comes out. So on the roll call, you know, I had uh, 55,000 Yankee fans booing me onto the field on my home, home ground. I, and I knew it was going to happen, so I told my mum, I said, look, mum, they're going to boo me, don't worry about it. I can take it. It's no problem. We'll, you know, it's all good, don't worry about it. So, you know, it's, uh, it was something, uh, an experience for my mother to yeah. see, that's for sure, and my parents. So, so uh, you know, that's, that was the start of it, and they did, and then... Uh, you know, things change around. Well, they certainly did. So over the 1996 playoffs, you've pitched five and a third innings over eight playoff games. You allowed one base runner, eight punch outs, all five inherited runners, runners you stranded. So you've gone from being booed to when you came out in game six, what was that reception? Yeah, I still remember the, the picture, and I, I think it was the first time they did it. It was like game six of the World Series, and... And the camera was behind me as I was coming coming out through through the bullpen doors, and uh, and you can hear the roar as I'm running onto the field of Yankee Stadium, and I had a standing ovation, and it was pretty pretty wild and intense in, in three to four weeks from going from being stood up and, and booed off to the field uh, to uh, you know being being cheered on the field and with a standing ovation in Game Six of the World Series and. Uh, it shows you how fickle and how, how quickly life can change, uh, especially in sports and baseball. And uh, it was an amazing experience. So I hope Mum enjoyed that, that one a lot, a lot better. <laughs> I'm sure she did. <laughs> now, you, you played there for three years, so just quickly off track, but you're actually you're extremely well respected in New York. You're, you're a bit of a legend over there, and they invite you back to the, hmm. you know, the, the old timers games, which you are now. You've hit the big the big number on your birthday, won't give it away. <laughs> but you come home to a small country town and people just look at you because you're tall, whereas <laughs> you're in New York, you can't walk down the street without signing autographs or being cheered or people yelling your name. Well, how do you adjust to that? Or is it good being able to get home to get away from that fishbowl thing? Well, you know, it's been nearly, uh, well, nearly 20, 22 years. So uh, we had a reunion last year. So... Um, New York, it's, it's nothing like, you know, it, it used to be, but it's, it's still pretty, pretty cool to be recognized 20 years after you, you pitched in New York and, uh, you know, you still get people saying, you're, you know, you're going, oh, yeah, it's, you know, and that's wild when you think about it. Um, you know, Australia, it, it's not the number one sport, baseball. It's uh, certainly an amazing sport and 
and uh, hopefully you know we continue to grow and grow in Australia. Um, of course, it's my number one sport. I've, I've loved it all my life, and uh, and but you know it's 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 fun. It's fun going back to New York. I feel honoured to go back to the Yankees, go back there, and uh, uh, the old timers' day is just is just a tremendous time. We, I go back there and I listen to all the stories from Ron Guidry and he talks about you know amazing people and other you know, Thurman Munson and talks about Goose Gossage, uh, all the all these legends of uh, Yankee lore. You know, I've sat down and had a beer with Whitey Ford and uh, talking to Yogi Berra and all these wonderful people out there. And um, it's just it's great to be a part of that organisation I and mean, to be invited back. Uh, you're still a draw card there because. My daughter was in Yankee <laughs> Stadium last year, and my uncle's Graham Lloyd. She said that she was upgraded, so she was looking for free food and drink. Now, in 1998, uh, you actually um, you you went to another World Series with the Yankees again, and got a second ring. Yeah, I, I was I, I was with the Yankees for two and a half years, and uh, it was just um, this one I wasn't as much a part of, but. Um, I suppose I had one of my best years playing baseball that year, um, and I was a real uh, what they call loogie these days, left out, left left arm one out guy, and uh, you know I threw about 40 innings I think, but I had, had I think I had a lower ERA than Mario and Rivera, so I'll, I'll say that much. But you know, <laughs> so, but uh, you know, it was on a plan with that guy. Okay. But, but you know, in the, in the postseason, though, I, I only pitched a couple of times. In the World Series, I threw one pitch, so you know, I got one guy out at least. And so you, you paid for your whole family to go over and <laughs> yeah, to well, see you it play. Was, and it's and a uh... lovely place to see. So, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for many reasons, you know, baseball too. Right? But but of course, they're part of the atmosphere, and uh, you know, they love the experience, and and uh, you know, it was it was just a great time, and and we won that in uh, I think it was four games. We. You know, I think we had one of the best records. You know, it looked like um, this year uh, uh, Los Angeles were going to, you know, get up there and maybe have the best record ever. I think they've lost a few since the yeah. uh, uh, the All Star game, but but uh, we had 114 wins that year and in, in the regular season. But uh, we ended up winning 125 games and losing 50 that year, and it was it was the quickest baseball season yeah. I've ever played in. Yeah. Now, just before the playoffs, there. Eh? There's a famous thing that's always on the internet, and anyone Google's best MLB brawls. Um, <laughs> playing against the Orioles, Amando Benitez pops uh, Tito. Tito in the back, yeah. and you run out from the bullpen. Yeah, I, it was. Uh, I was not a happy man that day. I think <laughs> I'd had a fight with my wife that morning, and and I was just in a grumpy mood. But no, apart from that, you know, it was. Uh, uh, I was sitting next to Jeff Nelson, and uh, he said he's done this before. If he hits him here, we're, we're going to have to go. And I said, "What? What do you mean?" He said, "They played in Seattle. He played with uh, Tino in Seattle, and and Ed Edgar Martinez hit a three-run home run off Armando, and uh, Armando plucked Tino. He said he's going to hit him here. I said, "Well, we, we'll have to look after our teammates if that happens, and we'll go get him." So he did, and then we. Uh, went after him <laughs> and basically just looking after your teammates and uh, you know it, it was it was one of those things where you know it was it was very blatant and uh, you know even some other pitchers are saying a pitcher against a pitcher it's like you know it was a fraternity sort of thing but but it was it was it was more the team thing and uh, we uh, we really came together any any more than we needed to right that year because we were just playing great baseball and uh, you know, so we, we, we protected our guy and uh, and that was sort of that. Well, I just wish you had us thrown a few of those when we were at the Geelong Hotel all those <laughs> weekends. I wouldn't be having the scars on my face. I have. But anyway. <laughs> my third fight in my life now, Woody. <laughs> in 1999, during the season, that the Yankees make a blockbuster trade and they go after one of the best starting pitchers, Roger Clements. Now, obviously, Toronto want quality back and you're part of the trade that goes to... Well, yeah, it was it was a three for one trade, and uh, yeah, I was I was pretty disappointed to be traded that year. Uh, but they got yeah, Roger Clemens and uh, and Toronto got uh, David Wells, Homer Bush, and myself. And uh, you know, it was, we always like wanted it to be the wrong trade, but in the end, uh, the Yankees won the World Series that year, so 
can't really say much about yeah. that in that respect, but uh, I got a chance to play in Toronto, which who I originally signed for, and I was I was very happy about that and loved playing up here in Toronto and you know in in Canada. So it was it was a it was a great uh, time there, but unfortunately, uh, you know, to leave the Yankees, um, it was it was tough. And 2000, year 2000, you had a severe rotator cuff injury and, and missed the whole year that yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. And then you had to come back in 2001, but you did come back and yeah. had a very good season. Yeah, I think I threw the most games ever I had that year. I think I threw in 84 games. And uh, I had, uh, I think it was 9 and 4, 9 and 5, I think, uh, out of the bullpen. Um, it was, yeah, it was it was a good year and, uh, and uh, it was... Uh, yeah, it was tough coming back uh, after the previous year. It was a, a lot of uh, hardship in many ways, but uh, uh, went out there, um, you know, for, for reasons that, to uh, do the best I could. Yeah, and you won a, a, a very prestigious, I can't even say it, a really good award that year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Tony Canigliaro Award, yeah. It was, it's the Comeback Player uh, of the Year Award, and... Yeah, very honoured to, to win that one. Yeah. It was uh, yeah, a great award. To, and to then a couple more years in the big leagues, and at the end of 20, 2003, you go back in 2004, but you're probably nearing the end of your career because it's tough to come back. From, most people don't come back from a rotator cuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah, things were going downhill a little bit. I uh, had a fairly good start to the year in 2003, and then I finished up with Kansas City and disappointedly pitched there. I, I really wish I had a pitch better in, in Kansas City. The people there were so lovely and nice to me. Um, I might have been in the same situation as it was in New York, but uh, I had a lot of people saying, come on, Graham, you can do it. And, uh, you know, the, 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 those fans there were, were, were very nice to me. Unfortunately, I, I couldn't get the job for, done for them. I'm so happy they won the World Series just the other year. So that was great to see, but... Uh, um, so, you, yeah, I, I think I was just about done. In 2004, I went to spring training, um, just late spring training with Boston, and uh, Craig Shipley was uh, uh, with them down there, and he said, come on down, check it out. And uh, I had a throw, and they thought they were going to sign me for, a, you know, maybe minor league, minor league uh, um, contract and see where it went. But uh, unfortunately, looking further into it, they didn't have any visas left, and um, which kind of turned out... Good in a way because I got to play for Australia in the Olympics in 2004 in Athens, which was an amazing experience. Yeah. And that's the next thing. I mean, it, it, one door closed, another one opens. It, it's got to be a thrill. I know how passionate you are about the Australian teams, um, but having to play and let alone be an Olympic athlete and yeah. win a silver medal, yeah. pretty huge thing. It was It was amazing. It was. It was, to, uh, you know, you play for big leagues or you play, you know, over in America. It's not really that uh, that heart thing. It's just you, you're trying to do, be the best you can be for your team. But when you're playing for Australia, obviously you know the heart kicks in and on overload. And to have all your Australian friends that you're playing with, you've played against all your life, or you've played, you know, now you're, you're all fighting them for the the one one goal. And and having David on the team with me, and uh, you know some of the guys that did so such a great job, Chris Ox Oxbury. And, and uh, Jeff Williams as well as Glenn Williams. Uh, you know, it was just wonderful to play with all these guys. And, uh, you know, it was one of those experiences I'll never forget. You know, we bailed our, our butts off to uh, get to the gold medal game and uh, just came up short against Cuba. And uh, uh, to, to get a silver medal in the Olympics is a tremendous thing. And, and sort of to end my career right there was, uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was definitely a wonderful way to go out. Mm. And after you finish playing, um, you turned your hand to coaching. You're putting back in the juniors. You're the pitching coach of the under-18 side here. The kids are doing outstanding. You've been all through the juniors. You've been on the Perth Heat job. You've been in the Australian senior job. Do you prefer one over the other? I mean, I know you're passionate about coaching and putting back in the kids. but Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, the WBC is a, is a wonderful uh, 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 tournament and... The under-18s, I've, I've really enjoyed. Uh, you know, I think my first coaching job actually was the under-18s here. I'm in Thunder Bay, in Thunder Bay, uh, uh, in 2010, and we won a silver medal there, which was, you know, one of our best uh, results in, in juniors. So, 
um, I really enjoy it. I think that you know, see, you know, seeing the kids um, improve uh, or talking about things, and hopefully I'm imparting my knowledge the best I can to to make these kids better. But uh, I, I really enjoy it when you when you see so, some of the, these improvements and these kids succeed at, at what they're doing. Obviously, it's the same with the senior team. You know, I was gutted this year when we didn't make it through to the second round when, you know, against Cuba, and uh, you know, we'll, you know, we'll we'll fight on it, and we'll get to that second round next time for mm. sure. Now, you had another very prestigious award presented to you a few years ago. You are one of two baseballs ever to be selected into the Australian Sports Hall of Fame. You huge night. What's that? So it was a huge night and it yeah. was extremely well deserved, but. I mean that that's just massive. Yeah, it was it was huge. It was huge. You know, I, I you know, I, I was uh, you know, I was emotional when you know that that came upon me. That's for sure. And uh, you know, it was wonderful to have I think three tables of my friends there, <laughs> yourself included, there, and the people that helped me along the way uh, to get to to where I was. And uh, it was um, yeah, it, it's one of the greatest honors I've I've received. And uh, to be recognised by your country is uh, tremendous, and uh, they even um, had a video of Joe Girardi saying congratulations to me. So that was pretty cool as well. And uh, you know, I just uh, I, it was just a wonderful night. And I go back to the Sports Australia Hall of Fame every year now, and it's just a magnificent night that uh, that uh, I enjoy to to catch up and meet all these friends and legends from other sports and, and all these other people that are, that are in the sporting world from different sports all over Australia and you know it, it's great to uh, be able to talk to people that uh, you know you know you've seen from afar but you know and, and enjoyed and, and um, loved watching them and uh, you know getting a chance to say good day. And of course that's not the only honour people might not know outside of Victoria but Geelong have had a history of producing some pretty good sporting athletes over the year and they've done a walk of fame out the front of their AFL stadium there and you've got a I'd love to say it's a massive big sculpture but <laughs> it'd be two meters tall if it was but you'd have uh, you're, you're represented there with it with a you know yeah it's well it's, it is the same height as me but it's like a big plexiglass yeah. thing but, <laughs> but it's it's yeah I mean it's, it's wonderful it's to have yeah. outside um, from my hometown where I've grown up and uh you know that's where I started playing baseball in Geelong, and uh, and played senior baseball there as well after I came back from Melbourne. And uh, you know to be honoured in your hometown is another thing that you know it's just it's just a wonderful thing, and and uh, yeah, very proud of. And again, for those that don't know, if you're ever down that way, it's worth seeing. There's only probably half a dozen athletes honoured, and they have to be exceptional in their field, obviously, uh, which you have been. Just want to say two more things. Thank you, first of all, for being the patron of the alumni this year. Um, we really appreciate your support for us. And just thanks for your time here. I know you've taken time away from the kids to come and do the interview for the alumni. And thanks to one of our all-time greatest players, but also one of the nicest guys in Australian baseball. Thanks, Graham. Thanks, man.